as you can see, um, in uh, Anna's business, uh, as we talk about budget development, you can see that on page six of her, uh, of her business plan, we have a, a startup budget and a costing document. Very simple table that we've imported into the, uh, into the, the business plan. You can do that on a spreadsheet, or again, it can be a real simple list inside the, inside the business plan. Um, again, we're listing general startup costs. I also like to list who, the, who, who might be paying for that. Where's the source of the income from that? Is it from sales? Is it vocational rehabilitation? Is it the community rehab program? Is it the one-stop uh, system? Is it a pass plan through Social Security? Um, that, just, that just adds a little bit more detail to the, to the startup. Again, it's a list of ongoing expenses, both fixed and variable. And uh, uh, if you need more information on fixed and variable costs, that, that's in our book again. Or uh, you can go on our website and you can find information on that. Um, budget development, pretty simple. We're, we're looking at starting inventory. What do I need to get going? Uh, if I'm making picnic tables, I'm going to need some wood to get going. I'm going to need some drill bits. I'm going to need uh, some nuts and bolts to hold these things together. I might need nails for a nail gun. Uh, what kind of equipment am I going to need? I, well, I'm going to need that nail gun, and I'm going to need a compressor to run it. All those things cost money. So uh, in order for me to get going, I either need to buy that equipment, or I need to lease that equipment, or maybe I already own that equipment, and I'm going to bring that in as part of the assets that I bring to my own business. Am I going to need transportation? Do I need to get to the post office every day like Anna does? Am I going to have to go out to my suppliers? If I'm buying picnic tables, I'm going to have to go out and buy wood, or else I'm going to have to have wood delivered. I'm going to have to figure out how to get these picnic tables to my customers, or I'm going to say, you come pick up your own picnic table. So that again, that nonlinear piece of this goes back to, oh, who are my customers? My customers are people who are capable of arranging transportation to pick up their own uh, custom-made picnic table. I don't want to sell to people in the inner city who don't have cars and would have to load their picnic table on a city bus. That's probably not going to be reasonable. That might also, though, as I, as I work through my business plan and I deal with that problem that, man, I'm losing a lot of customers in downtown New York City where I live because most of, my, most of the people who are my potential customers don't have cars, but they want to get this picnic table out on their balcony at their apartment. How am I going to do that? Well, that might lead to a whole other product, right? A kit where I pre-cut everything and I put it in a box and they come by and they buy the box, right? And they can load that box on a city bus or in a taxi cab trunk. So again, be thinking about as you're writing this, be open to new ideas and new products and services. As you encounter what might be ideas, sometimes the solutions are a whole new business model, right? Um, shipping, what's shipping gonna cost? How am I gonna accomplish it? Uh, shipping is a big deal for people who run eBay businesses. They have to have a shipping department, basically, uh, in their kitchen or their bedroom or wherever it is, and that takes some equipment. It might take a postage scale. Uh, it might take a, uh, you know, it certainly takes transportation back and forth unless they want to pay the added fee of having the post office or UPS or FedEx pick that up every day, but that's certainly another nice accommodation for a disability. Um, what's my rent going to cost? What are my utilities? Can I afford that? Does it make sense if I can't afford rent? Let's say, um, let's say I want to start a, a shop building hot rods, um, but I can't afford the shop, and I can't afford all the, the, the necessary tools that might be in a shop, like a, a big air compressor and a phone system. But you know what? Maybe I can find a garage that has a bay or two in the back where all, those, all that equipment already exists, and maybe I could move in. I don't have to buy my own garage. Maybe I can run my hot, hot rod shop inside somebody else's garage, thereby increase the amount of natural support in that environment. In other words, a business within a business and a complementary business at that. And I've reduced my overhead costs because I don't have to buy a compressor. It already exists. I may have to pay for a portion of its use, but I don't have to pay for the whole thing. So again, as we go through this, as we run the numbers, we start thinking of other scenarios that will allow us to cut costs 
And again, raise convenience, right? Um, if we're locating our hot rod shop inside another garage, let's say a body shop that's already got customers coming, we're already in the automotive loop. So we've already, we can piggyback on their customers. They come in to get their car fixed after a little fender bender. They see my operation in the back. They wander back and they go, hey, what are you doing here? Well, I'm restoring hot rods. They go, hey, you know what? My uncle's got an old 57 Chevy. He's been wanting to get worked on. It's been sitting in the garage forever. I'll tell him you exist. That partnership, right, with that existing business, really cuts my cost and it expands my network geometrically or exponentially. So again, be thinking about different models, be thinking differently, and again, because everything costs something, anytime we can lower costs, we make more money, okay? Kind of important in business to make money. What are my insurance needs? People really freak out about insurance for some reason. Insurance and, and accountants. Insurance and accountants are both pretty cheap and they're both highly recommended. Um, uh, again, a lot of times people think about liability insurance for products or services. Most companies don't need that, but I'm not going to give you legal advice. You need to figure that out. Uh, uh, that's a great place to go and a good reason to go meet your local small business development center. Tell them your product or service that you're developing. Ask them their opinion about insurance. I probably wouldn't call an insurance broker. Uh, it's like calling the IRS and asking them for tax advice. Uh, insurance companies exist to sell you insurance. Um, they can certainly help you figure out what policy you need, but not whether or not you need a policy. Um, what kind of business is service, services, again? Do you need a bookkeeper? Do you need an accountant? Do you need somebody to do your taxes? Uh, do you need a marketing firm? Maybe your business is big enough that you actually do need a marketing firm. Those are going to cost something, so think about that. Um, you know, uh, what are your taxes going to cost? And you'll notice that uh, when you look at our spreadsheets in this particular training, we don't add taxes. And one of the reasons why is that's a pretty simple calculation generally, but various cities and counties and states have varying tax rates or no taxes at all. So we leave that up to you. That's again, another opportunity to go sit down with your small business development center folks and talk to them. They do this every day. They know what your tax rates are. They know if you're selling retail, what kind of re retail sales tax license you need, um, how you calculate that, what the percentages are. Again, those are pretty simple calculations. You know, don't fret about those. Those are easy to figure out. Um, what kind of licensing do you need? Uh, do you need a food handler's license? Uh, do you need a retail sales tax license? Do you need to be licensed in another state because you're doing business there? All those kinds of things. Those are great questions for the small business development centers. And there really are just quality people at the SBDCs. And it really is, again, that networking that you want to do, those folks know other people in the community. They know great suppliers and they know potential customers for your business. So go meet them. Um, also, how, how, what about uh, communications. Communications certainly uh, one of those issues, uh, you know, do you need a website? Do you need email? You may or may not. Do you need a cell phone? We find that cell phones are a great accommodation for folks with disabilities and for anybody else. But all those things cost something. Do you need a 1-800 number? Again, think through the process. What are you going to need? And this also goes back to feasibility testing. When you're testing a product, especially by selling it, you're realizing by going through the process the kinds of supports that you need, the kind of equipment that you need, the tools that make it easier to do it. When you're going through budget and costing research, what I like to do is to make individual assignments. Generally, people work through teams in our, in our business. Um, you know, we've got the, the potential business owner who may or may not be writing their own business plan, but most of us who are starting a business need some assistance, so we have a team around us. Make individual assignments to go figure out what things cost. Usually it's a phone call to the phone company or to an internet provider or, you know, somebody sitting down on eBay and figuring out, you know, what are the add-on costs for pictures and, and highlighting your product on eBay. Uh, if you're going to go out and have to rent space, send somebody down to meet with a property manager and go look at some sites, uh, you know, along with the, the potential business owner. 
uh, calculate the cost of that. Um, what's included? Are you know are heat and lights included? Uh, is there a sign on the building that could be used? All those sorts of things, and assemble those cost estimates together. It's a great team building exercise, um, and discuss a rationale for pricing and sales forecasting based on the research. And again, uh, just simply what that means is that you're looking at your costs now. Can you afford to sell your product or your service based on what you've now discovered about how much things cost to actually produce that cost or service? Uh, a lot of times people underestimate the cost of things, so we have to end up raising our prices a little bit. Okay? Um, the other piece that we'll look at here as well is budget and break even. Um, and again, in, in the handouts that we've given you with these exercises, there is a consolidated budget and there are break even templates. All you do is enter your data in there. It's very self explanatory. Enter your data in there and it will generate a graph for you that shows at the point where your sales exceed your costs, where your profits exceed your costs. And at that point is a break even. I try to include a break even analysis in any business plan I write so that people can look at that chart graphically and say, aha, in month 12, that's where we start making money. Or in month six, that's when we start making money. That's an important piece, not only for me, you know, in managing a business and in owning a business, but that's important again for the people who are going to fund your business. So include your costing data, your sales projections, your public and private support, you know, what are Social Security work incentives? Is VR throwing some money into this? Are you bringing some cash into this? Um, what's that looking like as far as moving your business on? And you'll notice that in your handouts, again with this, uh, there will be a budget that includes with support and without support. And without support, generally, it shows that if I don't have some startup help for, from vocational rehabilitation or from my CRP or from the one stop, that it's going to take me a lot longer to show a profit. But with my past plan, with VR's help, I'm going to start making money right away. Well, generally, that's a great sales tool for funding is to show, wow, you know, with just a little bit of help, I can get on the road and get moving with this business right away. So again, use those templates, um, uh, and and um, you know again, this is a sales document as much as it is a planning document. Finally, uh, what you want to do at the end of after you've put all this together uh, is to write up your summary, write a brief wrap up, uh, discuss the pops possible opportunities and some limiting factors. Talk about the threats to the business a little bit, um, and and again. Uh, uh, you know, don't talk yourself out of the business, put a positive spin on it, but talk about these in terms of here are the strategies that I've got to overcome this. If you're opening an espresso stand in Seattle, chances are you got some, some competition. But, and a lot of times people who are reviewing your plan will say, well, there's 800,000 espresso stands already in Seattle. And what you can say is, yes, but there's not one of those in this federal building where I'm opening this. And there's a thousand federal employees in this building and I've got the sole espresso stand. Yes, there may be a Starbucks across the street, but I'm more convenient. Even though I cost just as much as they do, I'm much more convenient. You don't have to cross that busy intersection to get to it. Write that in. You know, that's okay. Don't avoid that kind of conflict. It shows, for me, it shows that you've thought about the process a little bit. Okay? Reinforce the predictions of growth. Again, this is your summary statement, right? And be positive, but be thoughtful at the same time. So thank you very much. Sit down, write your plan. We're always more than happy to hear from you as well.